Thank you. All right. So that tells me that pretty soon he's going to call juniors. All right. When he calls juniors, those of you that he calls, just leave your stuff here quietly. You can head out the door. Camera's still rolling. We're still teaching. And we'll just keep on going through. You can uh, go to the Google Classroom and watch that video at any time for the parts that you missed. Or maybe you'll just be smart enough to jump to the front of the line and get back here as soon as possible. So I get uh, three. Some of the stuff that we talked about yesterday, we, uh, we're dealing with sines and cosines, and we said that um, when you have sine of theta, and then you get some number over here, like one half, um, what was it, sine of, uh, is sine of 60, is that one half? Or sine of, sine of 30, we've got the tree chart there. What's sine of 60? Y value? No. Cosine of 30. So over here, your input is an angle, and your output is a ratio. And then we discussed that the inverse, so therefore it seems to us that maybe sine of 1 half might be 30 degrees, okay? So uh, the inverse sine, your input is a ratio, and your output is going to be an angle. Is that kind of sounding familiar? Um, I want to talk about this in terms of functions, okay? Specifically, not just inputs and outputs, but domains and ranges, okay? So if we think of this as the function sine of theta equals some, some number, some ratio, the domain, if you remember, is what are the types of things that you are allowed to put as your input? And here we can have angles that are positive, negative. Is there any real limit to the to the, 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 the angle that we could put put in here? I mean, we're trying some yesterday. We're doing like sine of 200, sine of 500, sine. Of, don't remember. We're putting all sorts of numbers. So in reality. Our, our input, our domain, um, is pretty much negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity. However, we found that the type of answers that we get for our range are limited, okay? Say it again. Negative one to one. Uh, you do the sine of any angle, and you're not going. And it's it's the maximum you're going to get for the sine is one. The minimum you're going to get, or the, the most negative that you want to get of that, is going to be negative one. Okay. And the same thing for cosine. Tangent's a little bit different. We'll talk about tangent eventually. So I say that because if you remember when you deal with functions and then inverse functions, where everything switches around, it's the the output is the input and the input is the output. Okay. When you deal with the inverse function, in other words. The regular function is a mapping from here to here. The inverse function is sort of going back the other way. So when we talk about inverse sine, what's the domain? What are the allowable values that I, that I can put in here? Can I put in negative five? Why not? The do, that's correct. The domain on your inverse sine, inverse cosine, is only negative one to one. I'm only allowed to put in values from negative one to one inclusive. So I'm, I'm including those those two values. All right. And then the range, and this gives, is going to lead to an interesting conversation. What might you think would be the range? negative infinity or infinity, right? You might think it's just gonna 
give us give us anything, all right? Uh, I mean, it, it, probably, it seems to be that you said that you're switching around from one side to the other, and the answer is no, no, it's not. Okay, no, it's not. Well, I mean, that's, that's actually difficult, all right? Well, I'll tell you why it has to be difficult. I'm just going to just throw a question up here. Um, that board's kind of reserved for that stuff, so. What if I said, what is the inverse sign, so just sort of like an example problem, of, all right, one half. And you didn't know that I had already written 30 up here on the board, <laughs> okay? And you type in a calculator, don't type in a calculator, all right? Well, you can type in a calculator, but your calculator already has the idea which I'm going to tell you uh, figured out. But there's there's multiple problems that are gonna, we're gonna run into later on in this, in this course based on this thing that I'm telling you right now. So just play along with me for a second, okay? When I say inverse sine of one half, what thing is this? What type of thing is, is the one half? It's a ratio, y'all get that? Okay, all right. Um, more specifically, if I had my trig chart out, what would I be looking for on my trig chart to find, uh, to find the, the angle that matches that? Y'all don't know what I'm, what I'm talking about here. All right, back up. If I, um, if I said, what's the sine of 45 degrees, class? Your process is go to 45 degrees and look for what? You're gonna stop talking because you're the only one talking about the y value. Look for the y value or the opposite over the r, okay? So you're gonna, so this means look for y value. And what is y value, anyone, a sine of 45? No calculator, I want you, I want you to circle it. Five second break, Just pull out your unit circle. That's, uh, that's 45 degrees in radians. I want to know what the sine of 45 is. You're looking for the y value. So on that same, uh, that angle which you're looking at, what's the y value? Root two. Root two over two, all right, now we're cooking. All right, somebody else, sine of 180. You go to 180 and you look for the y value. What is the y value, Robert, of 180? Zero. Zero. Uh, sine of? I don't know, 210, negative one half. Y'all remember how to play this game, right? This is, I give you the angle, you tell me the, the ratio, which happens to be the y value, okay? Let's play the other game. I'm going to tell you this thing over here, you tell me the angle, okay? So I would say, what is the inverse sign of root two over two. And you would say 45 degrees. Why? Because you, root two over two is the y value and I'm asking you for the, uh, the, the angle, okay? If I would say uh, what's inverse sine of zero and you would say 180 degrees, okay? Because I'm telling you the ratio and you're telling me the angle. Okay, so we're, we're, we're going the opposite way. Now y'all with me? Kind of the train going? Okay, so here we go. Inverse sine of one half. You're looking for the y value of one half and you're going to tell me the, the angle. So what is the angle there? 30 or 150. 30 or what? 150. 150, okay? Wait a second, so 30 or 150, so you're telling me there's two answers? Y'all look, look at look at 30 degrees and what's the y value? One half, y'all go to 150, 150 degrees. It's a, in, fact, in fact, it's the same thing with all this other stuff here too. When I said inverse sine of root two over two, is 45 degrees the only answer right there? No, we could also say, or, what's the other one? 135. If I said inverse sine of zero, is 180 the only place where there's a y value of zero? No, what's the other one? 360. Okay? Um, and in fact, if we wanted to be really technical, we'd say, why even stop there? I mean, the zero and 180, why not, you know, 720, right? Why not 
10 80. Why not you know, and you keep on going around and stuff like that? Okay. So number one, we have to, we can't give an infinite number of answers. Okay. Um, number two, how am I going to decide which one of these is the correct answer? Okay. And I'm going to go back to your algebra one and, and algebra two days and talk about a function. Okay. Now, if you remember, a function is some sort of relationship between some numbers and other numbers that for every input, you get only one output. That's the definition of a function. I don't know um, how exactly it was, it was taught to you. They, they probably said it many different ways when you're out of one out of future. But they said, like, you know, you get one y for every x. Does that maybe start to ring a bell? Um, and the way that you would test that was, you know, like if you had some sort of function that looked like this, or some sort of graph, and you would do something called the vertical line test. Do y'all remember that? On a, where you would pass a, a vertical line through it, and you would see that, you know, if your graph maybe kind of did something like weird like that, I don't know, then you would say, aha, this does not pass the vertical line test. fails the vertical line test because for this x value, I get a y value here and a y value here, a y value there, okay? Is this making, or, 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 or my, hopefully it's ringing some bells. If it's not, just let me tell you, mathematicians don't like it when you have one input and you have this one or this one or this one and those answers. That's not, that's not really very helpful. Your calculator's not set up that way, right? Some of y'all were keying in already, inverse sine of one half, and your calculator is only going to spit out one answer. It's not going to say 30 or 150. There, it's going to make a decision. Mathematicians had to make a decision. And then they said, when we're going to talk about inverse sine, we are only going to make it so that there's one answer. And this is what they chose. They said, we're only going to give the first quadrant answer or the fourth quadrant answer. OK? For inverse sine, we're only going to go give, give ones in the first quadrant or the, or the fourth quadrant. We are not going to give any answers for inverse sine over for the second quadrant or the third quadrant. We're not going to give any of those. So, with that being said, 30 degrees or 150 degrees, what class? 30 degrees. Go ahead, now put your calculator in degree mode. And then I want to walk around, I want to see everybody type in inverse sine of one half, okay? <laughs> Inverse sine is that shift sign, and so now you understand what's going on there, right? But I might ask you at some point, what's what's another possible answer? And you would say, uh, 150. Yep, 30 degrees, 30 degrees, 30 degrees. Yep, 30 degrees. Okay. 30 degrees. Oh, that's fine. Where you got it? I'll take your word for it. Tell us some yes. Sorry, yes. Okay. Let's do a couple more of those. So I'm going to make a note. Sine, inverse sine rather, is only going to give quadrant one and quadrant four answers. So um, we're going to do, do the next one or two by hand. And then we're going to use the calculator to actually to, to verify that we've got a good answer. So let's do inverse sine of, oh, I don't know. Let's go negative one half. No calculator. First, let's go look at the unit circle. Okay? So looking at the unit circle, I'm. Uh, looking for a y value of negative one half and then I want you to tell me the angles. That's what inverse sine means. If look for the y value of negative one half and then tell me the angles. And I, I do want you all to tell me both of them or all three of them. Go ahead, Dominic. Each angle. It depends on where we are. Okay, hold on. So 210, are you all in agreement? 210 or 330? Yeah, I agree with that. 
Now, since inverse sine is only quadrant one to quadrant four, this one over here is in quadrant four. So this would be the correct answer. Okay. Now, is everybody is everybody comfortable with that? Because I'm going to throw you for another loop. This is why free calculus is a little bit hard because you, there's just a lot of kind of rules and stuff like this. Let's type it into the calculator and let's negative type 30. in inverse sine of negative one half. Negative one in the world, come on. Can't we get a break here? Now let's talk about it. Where is negative 30 class? Yeah, that's four quadrant. In fact, known by another name in positive rotation, it is 330 degrees, yeah. Okay, so 330 is negative 30 degrees. Um, what is Alex going to want for their official answer? They're gonna want negative 30. But hey, that's okay because that's what the calculator's giving us, okay? In fact, I'm gonna be a little bit more specific. Um, in fact, mathematicians, they don't just say, I want the quadrant one or the quadrant four answer. This is what they say. They say that the range on inverse sine is from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. That's what they say. Because that actually is a much easier way of talking about this region and this region. Otherwise, you have to say, the range is from zero to 90, as well as from 270 to 360. Yeah, that's kind of a mess. It's actually easier to say from negative 90 up to positive 90. Does that make sense? Otherwise, you'd have a, you'd have a piecemeal. You'd have, oh, you'd be saying from zero to 90, along with the union, 270 to 360. Who wants to mess with that? They don't want, does that make sense? They don't want to have different pieces. So they, they say that the range of inverse sine is negative 90. In fact, if they're at the point where they're talking about the range of the inverse, um, functions, they're actually going to say negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, but that's who really cares about that. Um, so you might now ask, okay, Mr. Goddard, is there a same kind of a deal with the inverse cosine? And I'll say yes. All right, let's play the inverse cosine game. I say inverse cosine, well, I like this one half business because it's kind of makes sense. So when I say inverse cosine, you are looking for not the y value of one half, you're looking for the x value of one half, and you're going to tell me the angle. So, so normal way, sine, cosine, tangent, I tell you the angle, you tell me the x or y value or the x over y or y rep. With inverse sine, inverse cosine, the game is I tell you the x or y value, you tell me the angle. Okay, does that kind of make sense? Yeah. All right, if, if you can just kind of figure out which game we're playing, the forward game or the backward game, then we're good to go. So this is the backward game, looking for an x value. Dominic, looks like you've got something there in your mind. Where do we have x values of one half? 60 degrees and 300 degrees. Close. It's actually in one and two. Inverse cosine, we're looking for answers in quadrant one and quadrant two. So it's just going to be our 60 degrees. Um, and the reason why they switched that is because we want to have cosine values that in incorporate negative and positive. So the positive values of cosine are going to be where x is always positive, which is over here, and the negative cosines are just going to be over here. If we limited, this is, you all don't need to totally get this, but if you can track along, it's fine. If we did inverse cosine of quadrant four, quadrant one, we would never be allowed any negative x values. So that's why they, they cut it up there. So cosine, we're looking for quadrant one and quadrant two. This is actually my favorite. I love inverse cosine because uh, it's literally, the range is from zero to 180 or zero to positive. And 
let's go ahead and type that in. Type in your calculator, inverse cosine of one half. 60 degrees. We might as well do inverse cosine of negative one half. What are, uh, so the game is looking for x values of negative one half. There should be two of them. I need someone else other than these guys that are playing the row here, playing the game here. Ladies? Give me uh, a couple of angles. There's at least two of them there that have an x value of negative one half. 270. I hear 270. And there should be one more. 120. 120. Because we're looking for negative one half. Yep. So keep talking to me, ladies. Which one of those are we going to keep? 135. 135? No, I don't know. I don't know who said that. Anyway, sorry. 120. That's what we're keeping. Because 120 is the quadrant two answer. It's the one between 0 and 180 degrees. Inverse tangent. Is just like inverse sine. It's going to go quadrant one, quadrant four. Uh, so negative ninety to positive ninety. Yada yada yada. I actually get some homework problems. I don't know if y'all saw this. Things are crazy here. Y'all need to just have this. working through here. So this first one, inverse cosine of negative 0.64. By the way, we're going to need at this point to make sure that our calculator is in radian mode. So go ahead and go real quick to that mode button, change it to radians. That's a little bit annoying, but that's not too big of a deal. Uh, does somebody have a number there? 2.27. That's literally all you have to do is you have to use your calculator. <laughs> this one, inverse tangent, 0.93. Key it in, what do you get? 0.75. Now, this is going to be a great one. Inverse sine of negative 2.41. Error? Why is it error? Because it's greater than one. Remember, inverse sine, we are inputting a ratio. And what we said earlier with the arrays, the only things that you're allowed to input into inverse sine and inverse cosine are values between negative one and positive one. Okay? Here we're trying to input a value more negative than negative one. Okay, so uh, this is undefined. Actually, put undefined. That's one of these uh, answer choices. All right. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can handle the other ones. They're similar to that. Let's move on down to the next set. Um.
find the exact value of the inverse tangent of the tangent of 5 pi over 6. Okay. So let's play the game class here. This one right here, 5 pi over 6, that's the angle. So I'm going to write inverse tangent of, so I tell you, so we look at the angle of 5 pi over 6, and then you tell me the y value over the x value, or if you have that handy dandy little thing on your, uh, on your chart, you can see that. So anybody, what is that? Anybody have inverse tangent? Or I'm sorry, tangent of five pi over six on their chart? What's that? I'm hearing negative root three, but I'm gonna need validation. Negative root three over three. I'm hearing negative root three over three. Which one is it? I also have on my paper negative root three over three, so I'm gonna go with that one. Okay, um, now we need to do inverse tangent of negative root three over three. Now someone might be saying, wait a second, inverse tangent of tangent, isn't it just back to where we started from? Well, it might be, except for the problem that um, world, uh, five pi over six, I think is over there in a quadrant two, and inverse tangent is only gonna give us quadrant one answer, so figure out what the reference angle is in between quadrant four and quadrant one that corresponds to reference angle between quadrant two, then you're good. If you're not, then I'm gonna show you how to take care of it. And that is, key the sucker into the calculator, okay? But wait a second, let's go degrees on this. So, use degrees. Sorry to interrupt, teacher. Here we go. We are now ready for juniors A through L for pictures. All right. Uh, the rest of you guys sneak up here. So let's put our calculator in degree mode and let's go inverse tangent of root 3 over 3. And what do you get? I'm walk around and I'm going to see that answer. I'm going to do inverse tangent of negative root 3 over 3. Because y'all are silent now. Wait, negative root 3 over 3? Yeah, negative root 3 over 3. Mm -hmm. Alright, so it's got negative 30. Uh, you need to put the e to close the square root. You have the square root of 3 over 3. You need to close that parenthesis right there. Negative 10 degrees inverse square. Negative, negative square root 3. Close parentheses. Divided by 3. Close parentheses. There you go. Negative 30. Okay, so let's change your mode to change your mode to degree mode. the parentheses right here because you're doing square root and then open parentheses three over three. So type that the whole thing again. Inverse tangent, negative square root three, close parentheses, divided by three, close parentheses. There you go, negative 30. Good job closing those parentheses. Okay, so we have found that the inverse tangent of negative root three over three is negative 30 degrees. Um, we know that that is right here, right, on our unit circle. Um, let's convert that. We've got our unit circle. What is that in radians? Because they want our exact answer in terms of pi. So you could go through and do multiply by 180, blah, 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 but why bother? We've got, where, uh, where is that, Nayeli, on the unit circle? 
It's 3.30, right? Okay. Um, so you can also say 3.30. But they're going to want negative 30, but in terms of radians. Okay, 11 pi over 6. Okay, that's good. That You're talking, to, you and I, we're talking about the same place. However, they're not going to want that answer. They're going to want the negative pi over 6. Let's see if that makes sense. Does that make sense? They want, because technically, negative 30 um, it's talking about the same angle as 330. It's talking about the same angle as 11 pi over 6 radians. But negative 30, literally, if you if you convert it, if you think about what is the radians, it's negative pi over 6. Does that make sense? And that's that's what they're looking for. This is the hardest problem on homework. Too bad they have to read it too. Okay. We're gonna keep working. We've got another 15 minutes. We're gonna keep doing all these problems. Let's go. Uh, question four, find the exact value of inverse sine of the sine of two pi over three. So, uh, sine of two pi over three, we'll play the game. This is, I'm giving you the angle, so this is the angle. You tell me, uh, help me out class, if, if, there, if I say sine of something, sine of the angle, then you're going to go to the answer, we'll find that angle, and you're going to tell me the, the y value. Tell me the y value. That's this inside game right here. So the outside is inverse sine. So it's square root of three over two. Marari, does that make sense to you? Does that, does that match what you found on the unit circle? When you find two pi over three, you have your unit circle out there? Mm -hmm. I see it. What's the y value there on two pi over three? Two, oh, okay. Yeah. Three over two? She says it is. Okay. Now, there's, if y'all, once again, you might say inverse sine of the sine, isn't it the same thing, right? Can we, isn't the answer two pi over two? And the answer is no, because inverse sine is only going to spit out the first quadrant or fourth quadrant answer. So, as much as I would love to tell you this right, two pi over three, because plus two, minus two, fill the hole, in reality, we have to play the game and adjust it to represent. You don't understand what I'm saying with all that, that's fine. All we have to do now is make sure our calculator is in degree mode, and we're gonna type in inverse sine of root three over two, and make sure you've got that parentheses, you know, you've got the, the square root just like we had last time. Um, this is jumping back to the last question. Sure. Yeah, no, I want to too. So there we have tan inverse root three over three. Uh -huh. Then we go to the inner circle, so it's y sine of three. That was, that's why I missed a typo. Uh, that's, okay, um, tangent is not going to be one of those listed. That would, that's the x coordinate and the y coordinate, which correspond to the cosine and the sine. Okay, so but, I kind of figured out um, how that gets negative. How would you figure out that? Um, you would do y over the x, so was the y value was root three over two, and the x yeah, value. That's, that's kind of what I think. Yeah. yeah. So it's root three over two times two over one. So I, I think we I think we mixed, mixed it up here. I think. I thought it was one. Five pi over six. Where's five pi over six? Okay. So it's y value over the x value. So the y value is one half. The x value is root three over two. Okay. Um, so that would be one half times two over root three. So that's one over root three, which would end up being root three over three. Okay. Um, some of the students on the last time wrote on their, their unit circle in the notes, they wrote all the tangent values out to the side on those, and that's what they were looking at. Okay. So that might be it. That might be a good thing to transpose onto your unit circle. Does that make sense? That's good. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay, that's great. So, uh, class, Taylor, when you plug in inverse sine of root three over two, what did you get? Anybody else get 60? Okay.
60 degrees is the correct answer. That was the, I give you the ratio, you tell me the angle. All right, now we need to convert that to radians. Five or three? It's real nice because it's right there on the, it's right there on the unit circle, right? Seven. Believe it or not, these problems are easy. exact value of the inverse sine of negative root 3 over 2. So, let's, uh, even though I know they want our answers in radians, we're going we're gonna to trick it. We're going to, just like we have been doing all along, we're going to make sure our calculator is in degree mode, so that way we get the nice degree, and then we'll have it use our unit circle to convert it back to radians. So we're literally going to type in the calculator, inverse sine, and then negative square root of 3. Remember to put that close parentheses there, and then divided by 2, and then close the parentheses again. How long would you get on that one? Say again? 300? The calculator's giving me 300? I, I'm just being, uh, it, 300 might be a, uh, might be a, might be a, might be a different. Negative 60. Negative 60. Smart here, girl. This is because negative 60 is a 300, but the calculator is not going to give you 300. They're going to give you negative 60. Okay. So now, Trey, let's look at our unit circle. You see where negative 60 is, right? It's just going to be right down there. Okay. Uh, positive 60. What I want to do is I want to convert that negative 60 into radians. You might say, well, that's also, like she said, you might say that's 300. That's, that's not what I'm looking for. I want you just to straight up convert negative 60 into radians. So it's going to be negative close. Is it 5, 5, or 3? Is that what that's supposed to be? Is that what that is? Oh, no. Pi over 3. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We want negative pi over 3. So 5 pi over 3 is that same location. <laughs> We're all talking about the same spot, but they want us to talk about it in the right way. And that is, um, in this case, the negative pi over 3. So do we just go to, so if you have a negative 60, do you just go to square root and make it random? That's absolutely correct. Yes. You, you can look at 60 and say 60 is pi over 3 radians. And here I'm at negative 60, so that must be negative pi over 3 radians. I told you this was going on the back really easy. Number seven looks good because I think it's going to be a different number than four. Inverse tangent of negative root three. Remember, we're in degree mode to be able to get our, our answer. Negative 
negative 60 degrees. Uh, I need someone else to verify that. Is that what you all get? Okay, someone else. What would negative 60 be in radians? Negative 5 or 3. negative root 2 over 2. That looks like it's one of those 45 degree, okay? You might even be able to do this one in your head if you think about it. Right, Preston? Root 2 over 2, you know that's going to be a 45 degree reference angle, right? And it's negative. Which one's going to have a, which quadrant's going to have a negative sign? Quadrant 1 or quadrant 4? Quadrant what? 1. Or sorry, 4. Quadrant 4, right? So then you just think about what's the, what's the, what's the angle down to quadrant 4? And you might say, well, I think it's uh, like, what is it, 315? 315, but what's that? But we want the negative one, so it's going to be like the negative something, something. Think about that. Did y'all get negative 45 degrees for that? Yeah. And so how would we refer to that in radians? Negative 5 over 4. Um, are we feeling a little bit better about this? It, I mean, it's literally just key it into the calculator, but then. It's your pre-calculus knowledge as a student, as a, as a pre-cal student, that know, okay, I know negative 45 degrees, the main circle is going to be negative 5 over 4, combined with that handy-dandy unit circle. I would definitely recommend on this printed out one that I gave y'all, you go, ahead, go, around the, go around the circle and write down those tangent values just because it can be really helpful to identify those. Um, do we need to look at anyone? this one? Number ten is exactly the same as number eight, I think, right? And number nine isn't that exactly the same? Number six. And number six. We've done all of them. Sorry, Dalton. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need two people to tell me a process or something that we talked about today using. Pre-calculus vocabulary. <laughs> so uh, now, whole sentence. We talked about inverse functions. We talked about inverse sign. Oh my gosh. Anybody else want to go, go give it a shot? <laughs> That's a phrase, not a sentence. Now hold on, Dalton. Let me give you a shot. Go ahead and say it again. Go ahead. We use inverse sign. Alright, you've got one minute. I want everybody to walk around and I want you to write down one sentence on your paper of something that we talked about today. It could be on that piece of paper right there. Today I learned how to Like it's refreshed. Okay.